Appreciate the resurrection of Jesus. Appreciate the resurrection of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ah, uh, one more level of excitement to the house. One more level of guys on this side. Amen. And you people on this side, shine for them on this side. Glory be to Jesus. And you people at the back, can I hear you? Can I hear you one more time on the upper level? Praise the name of Jesus. Praise Him. We bless you. We appreciate you more and more. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated at the beginning of the service. Feel somebody before you say, just elbow them or wave at them, amen. You're welcome to the service this morning. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. I first want to just appreciate the woman, one of my daughters, who blessed us with these couches, amen. Put your hands together and appreciate them, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, more and more. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. When you understand honor, you do what the word of God says, and there's a reward. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How are you this morning? Yes. Are you forgotten? Eh? How are you this morning? You are blessed and you are famous. Amen. Because your Father God is Almighty God. Same with you watching us. You are welcome this morning. We want you to know that you are blessed and you are famous. In the name of Jesus, because your Father God is the Almighty God. Your Father God has destiny for you, and we just want to welcome you to the service this morning. Uh, enjoy the service. May God bless you and minister to you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Church of God, shall we welcome them? Appreciate them. One more time. Amen. Hallelujah. And the rest of you, you're all coming to the house of God. We thank God for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is alive, amen, forevermore, never to die again. He is alive and is on the right hand side of God the Father, our mighty God. So I'm going to take on a journey on the benefits of the resurrection through fellowship with Jesus. The benefits of the resurrection through fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, means nothing if you and I do not fellowship with the Lord Jesus. Amen. The resurrection of our Lord uh, is to encourage us to fellowship with Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And we're going to see some of the benefits of that in the Bible. Amen. Our anchor scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 5. God is faithful by whom you were called unto fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord so God is what faithful God can never be unfaithful he is always going to be faithful a man may be unfaithful the government may mislead and be unfaithful to the people leaders may be unfaithful but God is forever faithful praise the name of Jesus and in his faithfulness he calls us into fellowship. God is faithful, but in his faithfulness, for us to experience the benefits of Jesus' resurrection, we need to enjoy the type of fellowship that he provides us. So we are gathered here this morning for the purpose of fellowship. And our gathering does not end here. We continue to fellowship with God and with one another in the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So benefit number one this morning is salvation. Benefit number one is salvation. Acts chapter 2, verse number 21 is fellowship. We need to fellowship with God. So uh, benefit number one is salvation. Amen. Amen. Uh, salvation. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Glory be to Jesus. So the Bible says, whosoever shall do what call. Alright? 
So our journey as Christians started the day you called Jesus to come in your heart, become your Lord and your Savior. Praise the name of Jesus. That day when you called and said, Lord Jesus, I need you to save me. That was only the beginning of one of the benefits of why Jesus Christ resurrected. Glory be to Jesus. Now on the journey, you still need to continue to call on the name of Jesus. So the Bible says, whosoever, so whatever the color of your skin, whatever your height, whatever your size, as long as you know, you can call. If you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Our first point of salvation is having given our lives to Jesus. And by giving our lives to Jesus, now we have left the devil, we have divorced Satan, we are no longer serving Satan. Now we have come in the kingdom of God. As we come in the kingdom of God, our calling does not end there. Because on the journey of your Christianity, the enemy may attack you. The enemy might cause sickness, may cause problems in your life. So you do what? You continue to call on the name of the Lord. So calling on the name of the Lord is not just when I gave my life to the Lord. That was only a starting point. So we call on the name of the Lord in every situation. The moment that you have a challenge, the moment that the enemy is attacking you, maybe in a dream, maybe you can see something going to happen, maybe an accident, maybe sickness, Maybe your business is not making money. Maybe you are being threatened at work that they are retrenching and you may be on the leash. What do you do? You call on the name of the Lord. And the Bible says you shall be saved. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. So even in this situation, in the pandemic, we do what? We call on the name of the Lord. We call on the name of Jesus because it's our benefit. Amen. To be exempted from what is going on in the world. From the sickness and the premature death and the retrenchments and all the attacks of the enemy. Hallelujah. So this benefit saves us. It changes our lives. It positions us in a position where we are saying Jesus is alive. Because he is alive, we call on the alive God. I would rather call on the God who is alive than one who is dead. Amen. Amen. So we don't go to the graveyards like some people's habits are and go and call on the ancestors. My life is difficult. You know, I've come here as your son. No, we don't do that. We don't go to the graveyards and call on the ancestors. We will not get salvation. We call on the name of the Lord and we will be saved. That's what the Bible says. Amen. We don't uh, uh, call on uh, uncles and cousins who are doing sort of things here and there. We call on the name of the Lord. The salvation of our souls, the salvation of our lives, the salvation of our children, the salvation of our businesses, the salvation of our future is by calling on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have to continue to call on the name of the Lord. You can't say, no, I gave my life to the Lord some five years ago, and so there's no need for me to continue calling because God knows my need. Uh Uh-uh, you can't say that. You have to continue to call. Your first point of calling was salvation. You giving your life to Jesus. Now you are walking as a child of God on this journey, and there are challenges you may meet. There will be challenges that you may pass through. So you continue to do what? To call on the name of the Lord. I gave an example in the first service. We went to visit a friend sometime back in Soweto. And he had a very vicious dog. And on this particular day, I parked just by the gate. As I did, there were school kids passing by. And the dog was not tight. Maybe the owner was a bit delayed. And so the dog charged as we parked. It jumped over the short fence and was going to attack one of the kids, one of the school kids. And so, as an adult, I thought, let me protect the kids. I came out of the car, and then I tried to shoot the dog. And the dog turned around and started now to attack me, wanted to attack me. Amen. And so I realized that my defense is calling on the name of the Lord. I cannot fight the animal. The animal is vicious, his jaws are out. So what I did was when he charged towards me and left the kids, I just shouted, Jesus. 
And by calling on the name of Jesus, the animal withdrew and then it turned around and went back in the house crying. And the owner came out and he said, what did you do to my dog? I said, nothing. All I did was call on the name of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. So you may pass a situation like that. You need to do what? To call on the name of the Lord. You will be saved. Not you may be. Not maybe it shall happen. But it shall happen. You will. It's a guarantee. That calling on the name of the Lord will save you. Will save your suffering. Will save your struggle. Will save your sickness. Will save whatever the weapon of the enemy. Because Jesus is on the right hand side of God. Alive. So when you call on the name of the Lord, you are calling on a Savior who is alive, not a dead one. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are calling on a Savior who is alive as we talk here, as we gather here. Jesus is alive. All the other prophets of all the other religions are dead. No matter how you call on them, they are not here. But when you call on the name of the Lord, God who has guaranteed that you will you be heard and you will be saved. Praise the name of Jesus. Say, Father, thank you that when I call, I shall be saved. I shall be saved. Amen. Now, the Bible emphasizes something about the resurrection of our Lord in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sin. Glory be to God. So the Bible says, if Jesus was not raised, 1 Corinthians 15, 17. If Christ was never raised, if it is not true that Jesus resurrected, if it is an error that Jesus resurrected, then it means our faith is in vain. Hallelujah. Now, he is not saying it is not true. He is saying, in case there are people who doubt, in case the enemy comes to convince you and tell you Jesus is dead in the grave, he never resurrected, the story is not true. In case you are misled by the enemy, you are convicted wrongly, I want you to know, then your faith is in vain. Now, through our experience on calling on the name of the Lord, we have come to know that Jesus truly resurrected. He died for our sins. He shed his blood so that we may be washed. Then he resurrected. If he had remained in the graveyard, it would mean that even us, when we die, we will never resurrect again. Amen. Hallelujah. But because he resurrected, the Bible guarantees us that when we die, we shall resurrect. That means we don't have to wait to die. Even whatever may be dying right now in our lives, it can resurrect because Jesus resurrected. Hallelujah. That's why when we call on the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. Because the Savior himself is alive, sitting as our advocate on the right hand side of God. Saying to the Father and to the angels, go help that brother. Go help that sister. Go help that woman. Because he is alive. Hallelujah. Say he is alive. Say Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are alive. So if you continue to call on the name of the Lord. You will experience the fact that Jesus is alive. There are people who are not calling on the name of the Lord. They think I just have to pray my way. It's okay if you have faith. But your ultimate faith must be to call on the name of the Lord. Jesus saved me. Jesus helped my business. Jesus helped my children. Jesus helped my future. In the pandemic, Lord Jesus, protect me from sickness and disease. You will be saved. Hallelujah. You will be saved, I guarantee you, in Jesus' name. I can share many testimonies of people that I know who called on the name of the Lord who are saved. Amen. So remember that if Jesus had not resurrected, we wouldn't be saved. So he resurrected and therefore we receive salvation. We receive healing. 
we have a gain. We have gained something in life that nobody else can take away from us. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is a powerful benefit in our life. So when you go through a situation, do not forget to call on the name of the Lord. The guarantee is that you shall be saved. No doubt. You shall be saved. Man of God, suppose I lost my job and I'm looking for a job now. What do I do? If you are looking for a job now, you should be saying, God, when I find my next job, I shall not lose it. Amen. Amen. You'll be established in that job. If your business is not making money in the pandemic because customers have run away and whatever, you still call on the name of the Lord. You will see the intervention of God in your life. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Pillar number two is fellowship. One of the benefits of Jesus' resurrection is to give us fellowship with God. To give us fellowship with God. A lot of children of God are not fellowshipping with God. We need to have fellowship with God Almighty. Because Jesus is having fellowship with the Father on our behalf. So we as his brothers and sisters also need to have fellowship. Some of the challenges we go through in life is because of lack of fellowship with God. Amen. There are people who are wasting all their days, all their hours, week after week, year after year, not having fellowship with God. All they are glued to is television, certain programs on television, amen. All they are glued to is certain events and not having fellowship with God. There are people who are born again, they've been Christians maybe for seven years, they don't still know the Bible, amen. We tell them, let's go to uh, the book of uh, Malachi. They go to the concordance, to, to, the, to the contents rather. They check where is Malachi. That is lack of fellowship with God. If you fellowship with God, you will draw closer to God. You will know God. You will know the word of God. James chapter 4, verse 8. James chapter 4 and verse 8. James chapter 4 and verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Mm -hmm. Cleanse your hands, ye you sinners, mm -hmm. and purify your hearts, ye you double-minded. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, do what? Draw closer to God. How do you draw closer to God? By having fellowship with God. While you have fellowship with those people on TV, you need to create time to have fellowship with God. While you have fellowship with your brothers and sisters, you need a special moment to have fellowship with God. By doing that, the Bible says, you will draw near to God. It will be possible for you to cleanse your dirty hands. It will be possible for you to purify your heart. That's what the Bible is saying. Some people's hearts never change. They are always upset. They are always angry. They are always telling lies. They never change and they don't understand why. The reason is they are not drawing closer to God. If you draw closer to God, the Bible says you will cleanse your heart. You will purify your heart. Your heart will change to become a good woman, a good mother. Hallelujah. A good father, a good man. As you draw closer to God. Praise the name of Jesus. So now, having fellowship with God enables us to change in the way we are as children of God. People who used to know you in school with a certain character, when they meet you, they see a change on you. Why? Because you have been drawing closer to God. You are having more fellowship with God. So when you meet a friend and they say, Esh, you know, our life is a struggle now. You know, things are so tough. You who has drawn closer to God, you'll be saying God is a way maker. God will open a door. Life will still be lucrative. I will still flourish in the season. How do you speak like that? Because you are drawing closer to God. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Because you know the language of your father. So the benefit of the recent Jesus sitting on the right hand side of God is to give us fellowship. The Bible has told us that God is faithful. However, in his faithfulness, he wants us to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Having that fellowship requires that we draw closer to God. We connect with God more and more. Amen? We get to know God more and more. And so we stay with God and we do not lose God's uh, sight in our lives. Amen. Amen? We increase our word level. We increase our word level, this word of God's level in our lives. Because when you increase the word level, what comes out of your mouth is what has been deposited. There are Christians who, when they are in church, they speak the Christian language. But when they are out there, their word level is different because they are not drawing closer to God. Amen? Hallelujah. Are we together? There are Christians who, when they are in the house of God, when they are in fellowship, they have the word of God. But when they are out there, then another language comes out. It means they are not drawing closer to God. The closer you get to God, your language will change. Your behavior is different. Your attitude is different. The way you see things is not the way other people see things. When others are negative, you can never be negative. Because you are closer to your father who is never ne uh, negative. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Raise your hand and say, my father, I want to draw closer to you. In Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate there is day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. So the Bible shows us that the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has a benefit in the sense Jesus is having fellowship with the Father on our behalf. So by that, we also draw closer to Jesus who is having fellowship with the Father. So the fellowship that Jesus has with the Father comes down to us as his sons and as his daughters by the fellowship. Now that fellowship requires, according to the word of God in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, that you may know this book. You may know the Bible. Amen? You may know what the way. The Bible says, the book of the law, this one, should not depart out of your mouth. The level of the word of God in you must never depart out of your mouth. When you are conflicted between what you know the word says and what the word says, the word of God dominates that confliction emotion in you to only speak the word. Your child comes to you and says, hey daddy, uh, I don't want to go to school. You know, there is a bullying child uh, there and so forth. Because of the word you have, you'll be saying, my son, I will pray for you. From tomorrow, nobody will bully you. That child will go back to school. Amen. And will go feeling content that daddy said nobody will bully me. When the bully comes, that boy will say, today you can't bully me all. Amen. Where did he get it from? From the content of the word the father gave me. Are you here? Are you here? Praise the name of the Lord. So God is saying the word must not depart out of us. The level of the word in us must increase. We cannot be Christians who are coming to the, to the house of God year after year. Month after month, week after week, and we don't know the way. Listen, friends, we are going towards the end of the world. Amen. We are in the last era. The Antichrist will show up. Somewhere down the line, the world ruler may eliminate the word. May say, no more Bible. You can't carry a Bible. There are countries you can't carry a Bible. 
There are countries you can't have this Bible. So while you have it, make sure that you read the word. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the same verse, meditate on it. Read your Bible. Don't rely on the electronic Bible all the time. Hallelujah. Read this written Bible so you can understand it. You can highlight it. You can flip through it and it has a way in which it reflects back to you. Hallelujah. It has a way in which it has an impact on you. So don't come to church on Sunday and listen to the word. Then Monday to Saturday, you never even open the Bible. Amen. You need to do what? Meditate on it. There are people who, you know, when the police come and knock at their door and uh, they peep through and they find the police are there, then they rush to pick the Bible and they uh, open the door and show the Bible, hoping the Bible will protect them. Ah, ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are also other people, when they had a bad dream the last night, then tonight when they sleep, they put the Bible below the pillow. Ah, ah. Hallelujah. Meditate on the word. The word content in you will help you how to answer. Glory be to Jesus. The Bible talks about a young uh, ruler, a rich ruler in the Bible, who was walking up and down towards Jesus, asking questions. What must I do to, to inherit heaven? And Jesus gave him an answer. And he came back again, I've done this. What was He kept going up and down. He had no content of the word. Hallelujah. So meditate on the word. Spend your time in the Bible. Don't read it like a novel from Genesis. This year I want you to read from Genesis to Revelation. Uh -uh. Don't be like that. Find a way to read the Bible with understanding. Amen. Read what you understand. What you do not understand, continue to read. God will help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what you need to understand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I said praise the name of Jesus. This young girl I prayed for here. And I know she's sitting at the back here. When she came to our church, she couldn't open the Bible. Every time she opened the Bible, it was like a darkness fell. And I prayed for her. And then she came to my office and said, I want to just say something to you. I said, what is it? He says, you know, when I came, I could not open the Bible. When I opened it, all I could feel was a darkness. But now I am able to read the Bible. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. When you are unable to read the Bible, the devil is pulling you away from the promises that you must be claiming from God. Glory be to Jesus. If you don't know how to read the Bible, you need to come and speak to the pastors. They will help you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, maybe we need to start a Bible study. Amen. We need to think of a Bible study to help certain people in the house. Amen. So you cannot allow yourself to continue to live without knowing what is the Bible saying about me. Amen. Bring me the most useless boy. I will stay with him a month. In one month, that boy, I will pump the word of God in him. I will tell him, young boy, you are greater than you think. God loves you so much. God has died on the cross for you. So you are the genuine, you are the destiny. After one month, that child will walk out and go in your home a completely different boy. Because the content of the word of God changes our journey of life. Hallelujah. So the Bible says meditate on it when? Day and night. You can't be sitting at your company, you are doing nothing the whole day. You are watching the screen, TV, you are watching this program, and it's making you sit, uh, and your stomach is even hungry, and you are just watching, I want to finish it. And uh, you know, your phone rang, there's a message, and you are attend, and you're just watching TV. No, you have to read the word. You have to meditate on it. You have to connect to God through the word. The Bible says day and night. If you are a day and night meditator of the word of God, the Bible says as you observe to do what it says, then you will be opening a door for your prosperity and your success. You are not yet there. 
Don't deceive yourself. God has blessings for you here. Are you here? You are not yet there. Yes, just because you bought yourself a car and you know it was the first one in the generation, you are not yet there. There is a lot God has for you. Believe God and trust Him. The Bible says you will open a door for your prosperity and you will have good success. Glory be to Jesus. I am waiting to see you fighting where to park your car because of what God has done for you. I'm waiting for you running to give offering because God has blessed you. I'm waiting for you to say, this is my portion. I am going to change this on my own because God has blessed you. But that comes by meditating on the word. That door, that way is only open according to the way as you meditate on the word. Hallelujah. May you prosper. If you have eyes to read the word of God, may you prosper in the name of Jesus. As you meditate on the word, may God lift you beyond your imagination in the mighty name of Jesus. May God elevate you more than you ever think in your mind. As you meditate on the word, the enemy cannot hold you because you are coming content. According to something. Are we here? You are carrying something you know. When you are carrying a thousand rands in your pocket, you know you are carrying a thousand rands. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You are carrying content which cannot be taken away from you. So the Bible says, meditate on the word. Hallelujah. That is fellowship with God. The way to know God is to read the Bible. So when I preach to you and give you points, it's because I want you to go home with something. Otherwise, I can talk to you about Peter walking on water, then change to uh, uh, Joseph in the prison, then change to the apostles being persecuted. I can give you all sorts of, uh, of, of stories. However, my style of ministering to you is to give you content that you can go home and remember. So that when I meet you on Thursday, and I ask you, what was the message on Sunday? You don't say, I, I, I forgot my notebook at home. Ah, ah. You meditate on the word, it will help you. Spend more hours in the Bible. Have a program for yourself. Today, I am reading chapter 6. I must finish chapter 6 of John. And you read it in the morning. You read it in the afternoon. Some of you have got a lot of time, but you are wasting that time. And so the doors are not open. And you are not opening and pushing your way into success. Because you are spending a lot of time playing on your phone, playing on the internet. And it says there is a story of uh, 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 this man and this woman uh, uh, 20 years after they got married. You don't know what happened. So you click, so you read, then it goes open, so you go open, and you are carrying on and on and on and on, and sooner or later you realize you haven't even arrived at the question after one hour. <laughs> Am I not telling the truth? Am I not telling the truth? Yeah. Hallelujah. This celebrity, uh, you don't know what they look like 40 years later, so you click and you read, then there are adverts there, and then you continue clicking, and another one, and, and yet the picture at the beginning, they are not arriving at it early, to waste your time. Hallelujah. To waste your time. Time is money. Time is money. If I spend my time in the word of God, meditating on the word of God, the Bible says I will shorten my journey of prosperity. I will make my way successful. Hallelujah. Say the devil is a liar. Say the devil is a loser. In the name of Jesus, I shall spend my time drawing closer to God. In Jesus' mighty name. So meditate on the word. Amen. Jesus said something to the disciples in the book of Mark, chapter 7. 
and verse 14. And verse 14. I said to you some time back, I said, don't just be coming to church with a Bible and then you don't spend time in it. Spend time in it. Have a program. 30 minutes every day. I'll read the word and then I'll pray. You will find yourself succeeding. There is no other secret at all. Hallelujah. You will find yourself making it in life through the word. You will find yourself healed. Nobody laid hands on you. You find yourself, demons have run away from you. Nobody even said, in the name of Jesus, because you are spending time in the Word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 7, verse 14. Mark chapter 7, and verse 14. And when he had called all the people and said unto them, He came unto me, every one of you, and understand. So Jesus calls the people. Mark 7 verse 14. Jesus called the people. Right? Ozan, 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 Ozan. So they came. Right? Amen. When they came, he said, Listen and understand. Listen and understand. Don't come to church, you're not listening. You're not paying attention. Listen. Because what you will hear and understand will open a door for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So you come to church to do what? To listen. Jesus said, listen. Be attentive. What is the word saying? As I minister to you, the Holy Spirit will add more to what I am saying into your spirit. Hallelujah. So, the benefit, the second benefit of why Jesus Christ is resurrected is so that we may have fellowship that will draw us closer to God. Amen. Amen. See, I'm drawing closer to my Father in heaven. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go on to pillar number three. Pillar number three, one of the benefits of Jesus' resurrection is to give us hope. To give us hope. I touched on this last week. I'm just going to emphasize some other point. To give us hope. That means a child of God can never continue hopeless. Never. Never. A child of God must never continue hopeless. The one who is hopeless is the devil. The devil is going to be thrown in the lake of fire. Burning forever and ever with fire and brimstone. And some of you, like me, we will be laughing at the devil then. We will spit in his face, Dr. Phil, and say, aha, we got you. You thought you were something. Hallelujah. Because we have hope. Glory be to Jesus. Say, I have hope. Say, I have hope. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 17. Jeremiah 31 verse 17. And there is hope in thy end. There is hope how? In your end. Carry on. Say the Lord. That thy children shall come again to their own border. Praise the Lord Jesus. At the time God raised Jeremiah. Jeremiah was, and I know I'm going to be speaking to singles. Jeremiah was called by God. He was a single man. He never got married. Amen. And God used him so strongly. The nation was in trouble. There was all sorts of evil. There was disobedience. And so now God raises Jeremiah and he allows him to address every situation. The children in the family are scattered. So now God says there is hope in your end. Even your children will come again in your environment. I might be talking to somebody here, maybe your child is far out there, on the streets of drugs, on the streets of prostitution, on the streets of evil. Hope in the Lord. The ending of that child will be spectacular in Jesus' name. Have hope. The word of God brings us to a point of hope. So our Lord sitting on the right hand side gives us hope that he is alive. 
Because he's alive, as we pray, as we, as we read the word, as we see the evil in the world, what the pandemic has done, we have hope that God will turn it around. Glory be to Jesus. God will turn around your business. God will turn around your situation. Doesn't matter what the doctor said. God will turn it around when you have hope. Never lose your hope. You will be promoted because you have hope. Every time you come to work and the boss doesn't notice you, just have hope that God will turn it around as you receive my promotion. Just because you are 40, you are not yet married. If you still want to get married, have hope. There's a handsome guy hanging around you who spot you. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said, you ladies? That man will come to you in Jesus' name because you have hope. You see, when you lose hope, you lose what attracted him. Amen. If you are taking care of you, say, after all, uh, he's found my friend, he married my friend, so why must I take care of you? But when you have hope, you continue to take care of yourself. Amen. Because you know God will turn around the situation. So the Bible says, there is hope in your end. Amen. There is hope in your end in this week. Amen. There is hope in your end in this month. Amen. There is hope in your end in this year. Amen. There is hope in your end as an individual throughout your years that God will turn around, Amen. that your ending will be wonderful. Some people say, you know, I used to go to school with a certain man, and uh, this man, he has advanced, and everybody else, meaning when I gave my life to the Lord, I am behind. Have hope, my friend. The Bible says, do not envy the prosperity of the non-believer. It doesn't hold. It doesn't have a power. They go down quickly. But you, as God is raising you, whether it is slowly but sure, whether it is slowly and going up, just know that you will never go backwards. You will elevate and elevate and go up and up because you have hope in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil deceive you. Just because you are wearing the same clothes every time you come to church. You say, no, I can't even afford to buy new clothes. Have hope. Have hope in God. One day your wardrobe will be so full if that's what you want. In Jesus' mighty name. Have hope in God. So the Bible says there is hope. Where do we get this hope? Because Jesus died, didn't remain in the graveyard. He resurrected. If he resurrected, when we die, we shall so resurrect. Amen. So anything that looks like it's dying in our life can resurrect by the same power as long as we have hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. I say, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I hear all the hopeful people in the house of the Lord? Amen. Have hope. Have hope. If you lose hope, you lose everything. Amen. If you lose hope, we can't help you. Nobody can help you. Have hope. In your crying, have hope. In your tears, have hope. Walk like somebody with hope. Behave like somebody with hope. Live in hope. How will I raise my children? You know, uh, I have a, a little salary. I'm, I'm not having a good job. Have hope. Have hope. Your child who may not even finish school will end up doing well than one who finished school. Have hope. No, the country is no longer employing companies are not giving jobs. Ah, uh -uh. you, you are different. Have hope. You can be promoted in the pandemic. Amen. You can get a new job in the pandemic. Amen. Your business can flourish in the pandemic. Amen. Have hope. Your ending shall be spectacular. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I see all the hopeful people in the house? Amen. Therefore, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ positions us in a place of hope. This reinforces our confidence. We have confidence in God. We believe so strongly that God is on our side and not against us. We start to say no matter the circumstance, God is a way maker. He will make a way for me. 
no matter what happens, Jehovah will bless me in Jesus' mighty name. No matter what the enemy does. Yes, I was involved in an accident. My car was destroyed, but God is still on my side. We still know and believe and stay in that hope. Precious Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. This word is for somebody here. Amen. I am far from my parents. I want to do something for them. Every time I have money, I lose it. I can't do what I want to do. Have hope. One day you will surprise your parents. One day your parents will fall you. They will say, my son, is it really you? Is it you? Did you come out of my womb? When I? And you say, mama, I did. But when you were young, I never saw you like this. And you say, because God is on my side. I have life in Christ. And God is taking me somewhere. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for that moment when you'll have the biggest testimony of your life. I'm waiting for that moment when you'll have the biggest testimony of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says when your enemies will envy you, the Philistines must envy you and say, how come you are the same tribe as me? You are the same color as me? You went to the same school as me? How come you made it? You are saying, because my ending is different. I have hope in God. Have hope in your business. God is doing something in your business. In Jesus' mighty name. Have hope. Let me talk to you I'll end here. Have hope in God. God is still on the throne. Not Corona. Not Satan. God is on the throne. Hallelujah. He knows what he's doing for each one of you. Live with that confidence. Live with that grace. To say God is doing something in my life. Hallelujah. Just because you are walking doesn't mean you're going to continue to walk all the whole life. Your car is here. Yes. A good one. Yes. For that matter. Yes. Something smelling nice leather. Yes. That is your portion. Yes. See, prophesy, let it come in here. In Jesus' name. Yes. Have hope in God. Yes. We are talking about the Almighty here. Yes. The one who created the heavens and the earth. Yes. That's why you are blessed and you are very important. Hallelujah. Have hope in God. Whatever your situation. This is the woman I was telling you about. Couldn't read the Bible. But today she can. Read yeah. the Bible. To bless you. To open doors for you. Glory be to Jesus. Lift your hands before the Father. As you tap in the anointing. May grace come upon you. May grace be your portion. May the lifting of Jehovah be your portion. In the name of Jesus. I release that wealth man in you. In Jesus mighty name. I command that powerful individual to come out of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command that successful individual to be released today. In your life in Jesus mighty name. I declare peace. Peace and joy. Like a river. In your life. Romans chapter 12 verse 12. Read it quickly as we stand and go home. In a few minutes. Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Chapter 12 and verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing how? In hope. Patience in tribulation. Patience in tribulation. Continuing instantly. Continuing instantly in prayer. Rejoicing with an attitude of hope. Yes. Not sulking. It's not your portion. When I shake hands with you, rejoice with you. Hallelujah. Remain steadfast in prayer. Knowing that God, Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, He died on the cross. He defeated death. He defeated hell. He defeated Satan. He defeated the graveyard. And he is seated on the right hand side of God Almighty as my intercessor, 
as your advocate, receive that anointing in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. This man is special because of this grace. Because of what God has done in our lives. This fellowship is too powerful. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your people. I give you the glory and the honor. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted. May peace come upon some individual here. May the journey be fruitful. God Almighty, I pray. May mercy be their portion. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Somebody say, Amen. Say, I receive my portion. Say, I receive my portion. In Jesus' name. And maybe somebody in the house, you don't know Jesus. As your Lord and your Savior. You have never prayed a prayer to say, Jesus, come in my heart, become my Lord and my Savior. I want to pray with you before we go. If you are that person, you need Jesus to come in your heart. If you can lift your hand where you are, I will see your hand and we will be able to pray for your salvation. Is there anybody in the house? Is there anybody in the house, you need this prayer for Jesus to come in your heart, become your Lord and your Savior. Is there anybody? There's nobody in the house. Maybe there's somebody watching me in the comfort of your homes. I want you to pray with me. Put your hand on your chest and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for my life. Today I surrender my entire life. I give it to you and ask you to come in my heart. Become my Lord and my Savior. Wash away all my sins and forgive me. And today I declare I renew my hope in you. I believe, as I have made this prayer, that I am now born again, and my name is written in the book of life. Amen. If you made that prayer, I want you to know that's a sincere prayer. And I want you to know that God has led your prayer, and God has saved you. What you need to do is find a church, if your country is open, where you can go to church and know and grow in the Lord. Also buy yourself a Bible so that you can start to know God. Start reading from the book of John. The book of John introduces the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you know the Savior, all things work out good for you. May God bless you. May he keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. The rest of you, you are blessed. No weapon. Fashion against you shall prosper. The enemy's lies will never get to you. I declare in Jesus' name. I release your new things. I release your new things. I release your new houses. I release your new jobs. I release your new businesses. I release your new promotion. I release your new life. I release your new future. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. God bless you.